Hey, what's up people? How are you all doing? I hope you're doing fantastic as always, and today I welcome you to another Minecraft Villager Challenge. Last we were, we built uh, four more houses, but we're not quite done with stage five yet. We have to build um, the manor now. Whoa. No way, we've got an iron golem! Oh, this is so good. Oh, yeah. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? No. No. Come on. I just wanna just wanna touch you a little bit. Come on, let me just poke my sword in there. That's getting weird now. Okay. Anyways. Um <laughs> Fuck I'm a weird person. Okay. So we're all weird though, aren't we? No? Just me? Okay. So we need to create the uh the uh the heat the the trump? The heat the chieftain's hut. I can't talk today, jeez. So I think we literally have no wood for that. Damn it. Okay, that's annoying. Um, fine, it's fine, right? Let's just put all this crap away. Um, get ourselves some sticks. We have no wood, which is not cool. So we're going to need to uh, smooch some iron over here. Um, let's see. Okay, grab us an iron axe. I guess I thought we were going to build the chieftain's hall. We're not. It turns out, it's probably another story time spot. I hope you're ready for this. I hope you've prepared your anus from this story time. Um, let's look up some interesting questions from Reddit. Okay, so I found a pretty cool question. And um, it's basically, what made you realize you were getting older? Uh, that was actually a pretty tough one. Isn't it? It's a Any saplings? No. Oh, I should totally take these. You are going to the food palace. Right. Um, where was I? This is kind of a tough one, but I think... Um, kind of worrying more about things. Like, when you're a kid, like you kind of just know that your parents are going to take care of everything, right? Uh, maybe some of you didn't have that, you know, you had to fend for yourselves and for that, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm sure you're turning out A-OK, -okay, right? But, um, I don't know, just getting older and I kind of realized I gotta take care of things on my own so you know a lot of things especially for college you know that now that I'm uh, 18 you know your parents can't sign off on anything once you're 18 here in America and uh, oh crap my axe and you have to do a lot of things yourself right you have to sign off on things you know your own student records your uh, medical things it's all on you and I think another thing that was really weird for me um, realizing that I, that I was grown up, I guess, was realizing that my parents, I guess, don't know everything. Like, I don't mean that in a, in a mean way. My parents are very smart, you know, and uh, very experienced, very wise, because, you know, they've gone through life and whatnot. But it's like, they don't, you know, when you're little, you kind of just know, like, your parents just know, like, the answer to everything, right? You know, any homework problem you had, like, your parents had the answer to it, or, or, uh, you know, like, oh, hey, what does this word mean? Your parents just know, right? And it's just kind of weird being in college, you know, there's, like, my parents can't help me with my homework anymore, they might not know the answer, or maybe there's, like, technology stuff that they just don't know about, and that's, I don't know, it's kind of just weird knowing that, and I don't know. I think that's mostly how I started realizing that I was growing up, you know, getting mature, not to mention, you know, I'm going to be uh, moving out and going, you know, living on campus, um, next semester, so that's definitely, <laughs> I think that's definitely like a sign of growing up, you know, finally moving out. But what about you guys, you know, those of you that are older, you know, or if you feel that you're mature, well, no, you probably are, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past you, I wouldn't doubt it, you know, what, what made you really, what do you guys, um, but uh, I can't talk at all, what made you guys realize that you were, um, you know, older, I guess, I don't think, I don't think anyone ever just starts feeling adult, I just think people just start feeling like, wow, what the hell? Devil spawn? <laughs> oh god, the red eyes are terrifying. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that really makes you like, oh, all of a sudden, like, bam, you know, you're, you're an adult. Like, I, when I was little, honestly, Jesus, god. I don't like them. I don't like them. Oh, I got meat. That's amazing. I don't think, like, I think when I was little, I used to believe, like, there was, like, like when, uh, when you got to a certain age, like, suddenly, like, you got a book or something. Or I guess in today's case, a Kindle, you know, <laughs> an ebook. 
uh, like how to be an adult or how to be a dad or how to be a mom or something. I used to think that that just came in a book and all of a sudden you, know, you just read that once you got to a certain age and you would know what to do. But it's, uh, you know, it's, that's definitely not the way it works. You just experience things and it's through your experience. Like there's no real way to say, you can read, I found um, in high school, I guess I was going through a really tough time. Like, I don't know, I was, I think I'm a late bloomer and I didn't like start hanging out with friends until I was in uh, junior year. Yeah, I didn't, I never had a sleepover until junior year of high school. I wasn't, I was 16 when I had my first sleepover at another person's house. Hell, the first time, I went to other people's houses before, but that was like, that really didn't count. Like, I was probably, uh, I don't know, eight or nine when I hung out at a friend's house, but that was only because his mom was my, uh, was like, had ran a daycare. Otherwise, I never went to his house, like, just for fun. So the first time I actually um, went over to another person's house uh, wasn't until, like, what was that? Mm, eighth grade was when I went to somebody else's house, right? And that was just, like, a couple hours. But it wasn't until junior year of high school, uh, now that I'm in college, yeah, junior year, that I actually stayed the night. So I was kind of, like, a late bloomer. I suppose when it came, you know, socially and whatnot, I completely lost track. But I'm, I'm just going along with this. Um, crap, where was I going with this? <laughs> uh, crap. Let me think. Okay, I remember now. I was uh, talking about books and stuff. Yeah. Um. So in junior year, that's when I started getting more social. But I just didn't know what I was doing. I suppose, like, I was so awkward, and I, you know, I had a friend I was talking to, you know, just trying to, like, understand things, and I guess that's when I really, like, it's, it's dumb, alright, don't judge me, don't judge me, I got into self-help books, like, I thought, like, I, I read a lot of self-help books about how to be social, and actually, how to talk to girls, like, that shit's tough, let me tell you, um, oh, this wheat looks so nice, yeah, I read a lot of self-help books about how to like be more social, how to talk to girls and whatnot, how to like be more confident, and like reading all that stuff is nice and good, and like I'll admit, like some of that stuff is like pretty helpful, but honestly, it's just telling you what you already know but don't want to accept. Like it's like oh yeah, this this speaks to me, but it's like you know most of these self-help books go just tell you go out and try this stuff, but it's like no, no thanks, I'll just keep reading. You know if I read enough, you know I'm never. I won't have to do that, I just need to read more. And honestly, like, experience is how you learn things, I'd say, like, you know, I'm not saying, like, oh, you know, don't go read books, you know, that's not going to do jack shit for you. I'm saying, like, if you read something, you know, it'll do something for you, but you're only getting 50% of the experience, you know, you need to, you know, put things into practice, kind of like, kind of like math, right? You, you learn the problem, it's on the book. But until you put it into practice, you know, you're just memorizing. You don't actually know how to apply the theory or apply the, uh, um, the formula just yet. You're just, you know, you're just playing around. Well, not playing around, but you're just uh, memorizing. What the hell? So, um, yeah, anyway, where was I? So in, jun you know, in, jun in junior year, I read a bunch of self-help books, and I was still really shy and awkward. Let me tell you, freshman and sophomore year, I was so bad. I could not talk to girls at all. I would, um, now you might see this is strange, like, oh, how could you do that? That's impossible, right? I would go to different hallways if I saw a girl walking down one. I would try to find an alternate route to wherever I was going. I would literally change my course just because a girl was coming. That is, you gotta admit, that's pretty sad. All right, that is just sad, but I was awkward. What can I say, you know? I was afraid. I guess I was just too nervous. You know, what would they say? You know, they might make fun of me. You know, maybe uh, they'll make they'll say something on Facebook, and everybody's gonna laugh at me the next day. Um, uh, on another story time spot, I'll tell you how I like why I was able to avoid girls, and then you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it now. But anyways, um, yeah. So I had a really hard time, but eventually I started um, messing around in dating apps. <laughs> Like, I was, like, on Hot or Not and Tinder and whatnot, and I wasn't meeting with any of these girls. No, I'm not like that. You know, I don't just hook up with girls. I find that that's weird for me, you know. I like I like to talk to a girl and meet her and get to know her, right? And other people in general, you know, make friends and stuff. I'm not saying you'd hook up with, a, like, I'd hook up with other dudes, but I'm just trying to say, you know, socialize, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, let's sleep away the night and get some more wood after this. So, 
I kind of just started putting into practice what these books said. Like, oh, they're like, you know, talk more confidently. And that's like, that's like such a generic thing to say, but really, it was, that's, that's me like paraphrasing. Oh shit, Creeper. It was something more along the lines of like, oh, uh, don't be afraid to speak your mind, you know? You might have something weird, but if you just, if you just say something confidently enough, you know, most people will just like brush it off. And I'm not saying go around and like spew your cockamamie ideas like Hitler did nothing wrong or something, I mean. I'm not saying you might have that idea, but I'm just saying, you know, don't be a nut job either. Just be like, you know, confident, you know, and if the person's going to like you, they're going to like you, and if they're not, then don't waste your time. That was probably like the biggest thing I learned uh, from those self-help books, that rejection is a blessing. There's nothing, there's no better thing besides saying yes than a person can say than, than no. And uh, let me rephrase that. Basically... Yes is fantastic, but no is a good second best. Like, if a girl just says, hey, you know, and this is, this is for you girls too, you know, if a dude just says, hey, like, no thanks, and I'm ho I, would, I would pray they would not say it that meanly, but if they're, if they're like, you know, I'm sorry, I just don't see you that way, don't feel sad, you know, don't cry over it, just realize, you know what, thank you for telling me that you're not interested, because that means I can get on with my life, and, you know, hunt somebody else, you know, well, not hunt somebody else, <laughs> that's creepy, I can go find somebody else, you know, um, I don't have to waste my time anymore with you, you know, if we want to be friends, we can be friends, but beyond that, you know, I'm not going to shower you with attention, like, admit it, come on, maybe you did it, but I was definitely guilty of this, uh, like, if there was a girl that you liked or something, or a guy that you liked, you definitely shower them with so much attention, um, and just like make them at the apple of your eye and you know they're living it up and all this attention that you're given but they're definitely not uh returning the favor you know you gotta admit it they're there they're having fun with you but really when push comes to shove you're there for them but they're not there for you i need another axe um so i i think that was probably the best thing that i learned and that's what got me more sociable because i just started saying what is the worst that could happen is they say no and no is not that bad. It's not that bad to hear no. Right? It's just not that bad. It's, oh, I was trying to make bread. Dang it. I completely goofed. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Can't believe that worked. Right. So, <clears throat> now that I have that, like, mentality of, like, what's the worst that could happen, you know, like, as long as, like, the worst that could happen is just, they just say no, then really, that's not so bad anymore. I'm not a, <gasps> the holy wheat, oh my god, Oof. Um, now that I have that in my mind, I just don't feel afraid to talk to anybody. You know, I just go up to them, like, you know, if they just tell me to fuck off or whatever, I'll be like, fine, that's cool, you know, I'll go make other friends or I'll go talk to another girl, you know, you're not worth my time. You know, I'm not going to waste my time worrying about what you think. That's probably the best thing that I that I got through junior year was not caring really what other people think of me unless they matter to me. And if somebody doesn't like me and I don't like them or I don't care about them, then you know, why should I why should I be upset or worried about what they think? You know, if a person matters to me and like I disappoint them or something, oh, I'm going to feel, you know, I'm going to be in stitches. I'll be I'll be sad. You know, because, like, they actually mean something to me. But if they don't, like, they're just some popular kid or some stranger or some, you know, troll or hater. I don't care what they think. They don't mean anything to me. They're just some person with no better thing to do on their time than, you know, hurt somebody's feelings. So, you know, that's, I guess that's a little bit of wisdom there for you. Is like, you know, care what you think about yourself. Care what your best, best friends, like... Uh, think about you. That's another thing I definitely learned was everybody has a lot of friends, but you people have very few best friends. There's very few people, you know, you may say like, oh, Spot, what are you talking about? I got plenty of best friends, you know. Look, maybe it doesn't work for you, but for a lot of you, I bet, look back, see who was there since the beginning, who's there every single time you get in trouble, who's there when you, you know, you need some help, and you'll see like, oh shit, Spot, you're right, you know, I've got a best friend, it's this guy. You may call a lot of people your best friends, but more likely than not, you probably got three or four, maybe five best friends that are part of your crew. Maybe two that are like your best, best pal, you know, pals, like they're for you forever. You know, you're going to be friends with them forever. And then everybody else is just a friend. And I would almost say acquaintance. 
I would go as far to say acquaintance because, you know, more likely than not, uh, if you're in high school, you know, or even in middle school, in middle school, not everybody's going to go to the same high school. People are going to move away. When you're in high school, maybe three people, unless you have, like, unless everybody's just known to go to the same school, you know, maybe three or four people that you know that are your fr actual friends, you know, or best friends are going to go to the same college as you. So, you know, really, you know, knowing who your friends are is definitely very helpful. Like, who are your true friends? Because then you can know who you can be yourself with. And I think that's, the, like, the best thing ever is just knowing who you can be your core to self, not worrying about, like, oh, they're going to make fun of me because I'm not wearing the newest shoes or, or whatever. Like, you, first of all, you're not going to care what those people think. You're just going to care what your friends think, you know? And... I hear a lot of people saying like, oh, don't care what anybody thinks. That's not true. That's bullshit. You should care what some people think because they're your friends, you know? And you would hope that they, you know, you take their opinions into account the same way you would hope they would take your opinions into account. You know, that's what I do at least. Like, they matter to me and I matter to them. So you can't just say fuck you to the world. I'd say do that to the assholes, but to the people that are like good to you, you'd be good to them. I'm probably droning on. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know, these are like the words of wisdom that I got, I guess that I learned through high school and I really wish that somebody just told me this, you know, I didn't have to, um, you know, I didn't have to read a bunch of self-help books or go through a bunch of like sad nights wondering like what's wrong with me, why am I not cool or why, uh, why did somebody say that to me or something, you know, and I'm not trying to say like I was bullied or anything, but I think everybody goes through some tough times, you know, you can't, whether you're bullied or not, you know, you definitely can say you've had some tough times, or maybe even if you are the bully, you know, I don't know, maybe you, you know that in your heart, maybe you're not, I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I don't know half of you, I wish I did, but, uh, you know, maybe you are the bully, but everybody, it, like, if you step back and just ask yourself, what problems are these people going through, you know, you'll have, you'll have a little bit more empathy and kind of see, you know, everybody's a person, everybody's got feelings and most people aren't just mean for a reason or say things for no reason. You know, there's something that's affecting them or, or whatever. You know, that's kind of hard. I'm not saying I'm not saying like you got to be an open book or open heart to everybody. But I'm just saying, you know, not everything is for no. You know, most there's things there's a reason for almost everything. You know, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, keep your friends, keep your best friends close, right? No know who your best friends are, um, accept rejection for what it is, a blessing, you know, it's, it's, it's help, it's help from somebody saying, you know, hey, I don't like you, but, you know, find somebody else, that's a blessing, and it's a blessing in disguise, it's tough to take, but it's a blessing in disguise, uh, take rejection, and be happy who you are, be happy with who you are, you know, in your own skin, you know, I think a lot of teenagers nowadays, like, Oh my god, with all the celebrities, and not even celebrities, I, I think it's hitting a lot closer to home nowadays for teenagers everywhere, oh shit, like with Vine, so many teenagers are getting famous and it's like you feel like you're left in the dust if you don't have the most followers or the most likes or something on Instagram or Vine or whatever, you know, that stuff's, you know, that stuff really doesn't matter in the scheme of things, you know, it's just a bunch of numbers. So, you know, be happy who, with who you are and, you know, love yourself, I guess. That's, that's the best I could do. That's the best thing I could say. And, yeah, uh, you're probably like, oh, you know, easier said than done. But it's true. It is easier said than done. It's, it's all a process. It takes time. But just don't give up. Be yourself and be happy, I guess. Just try your best. Uh, life's too short. To go, you know, life's too short to go through it all worrying about what people have to think about you or what people say or worrying or regretting uh, or being unhappy you know it's not worth it it's just not worth your time it's not worth your life really um, yeah so this has been a story time with spot a little bit more um, introspective I would say uh, <laughs> a lot to go off of just one um, sentence but I guess all that stuff that I learned is what helped me feel like I've grown up you know matured uh, next episode, I will be building um, the, the, uh, the the manor. I hope you've enjoyed this. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe for some more Minecraft Villager challenges and story time with Spot. You are all awesome. See you all next time. Bye!